Hello and welcome to Strelcomania. In this video, I thought I would share all my tips and tricks for 3D printing PA6CF material using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and everything I've learned along the way trying, failing, and clogging using this material. This video will be broken down into a few different segments, preparing the material before printing, setting up the machine, slicer settings and print orientation, as well as other general tips. This video will not cover anything on annealing PA6CF because I have yet to experiment with that, so obviously can't comment on it. Once I dialed in my slicer settings, it pretty much solved all my clogging issues that I was experiencing starting off with this material. Yes, I did print with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and when it comes to those carbon or fiber reinforced filaments, it's recommended to print with larger nozzles because eventually all the fibers could clog smaller diameter ones, but in this case, my clogging was due to heat creep, which was essentially when the filament was melting too early in the hot end. So PA6CF or any nylons really are high temperature materials, meaning the hot end gets quite high, 270 degrees Celsius in this case, in comparison to other materials I normally date lately, like PLA, which goes to 215, 220. So in this case, printing at such a high temperature in this enclosed chamber and the fact that I didn't have proper part cooling activated was causing heat creep, so the filament to melt too early or prematurely in the hot end and resulted in many many clogs. The best piece of advice I can give for preparing your filament is to dry it. PA6CF loves to absorb the water from the air and that will affect how well the material prints. So there's many ways you can dry out your filament, whether it's on the bed of your enclosed printer, in your toaster oven, in your conventional oven, or in a designated filament dry box. Regardless of what you choose, make sure you look up the appropriate steps to do so so you don't fully melt your filament and spool and you don't damage your equipment. In this case, I'm working with, with the Bamboo Lab X1C. There is a built-in utility for filament drying as well as a wiki page on the Bamboo Lab wiki that tells me how long I should dry my filament. So I will, of course, link that down below. So all you have to do is go into the this second tab right here and then under utilities and there should be a button dry filament this is what I see on the x1c there isn't a specific PA6 profile but there is one for PA CF where I can go in and directly modify my temperatures and my hour the maximum I can heat my bed for drying filament is 90 degrees Celsius and then as per the online profile I believe it's eight hours where I flip the spool over halfway through I can hit prepare so the printer is prepared I can hit confirm and then hit start the bed will now start heating up to the 90 degrees Celsius that I set I'm just gonna give an example with this PLA CF I just place the spool onto the heated bed and then using half of the filament box I just cut the top flap off I cover the filament spool like this and I close my printer and I let it run for the duration. I do half on one side and then after half of the time has elapsed I come in and I flip my spool over and just recover it and let it dry for the rest of the time. Once it's done drying I like to immediately transfer it to my dry box and keep it in here until it's ready for printing. If you have one of those dry boxes with a seal and some desiccant beads inside of it, that would probably be better in terms of minimizing how much water it absorbs from the air. Filaments that are reinforced with fibers are known to be very abrasive. So in the case of the printer that I'm using, the PA6CF is not compatible with the AMS or the automatic feed system up there. So what I need to do is basically disconnect it and then feed the filament directly from the back of the printer. So if we're feeding the filament directly into the printer from the back, one thing we need to keep in mind is how we're going to store the filament while it's printing. So you can either keep it in one of these like cereal box Tupperwares with a bunch of desiccant in it to keep it dry, or you can keep it in one of these filament dry boxes that actually heat up and so what I have found success in and what I like to do is to have this 
heat box run at full capacity. So in this case, this Creality one only gets to 65 degrees Celsius. So have it run at max temperature for as long as my print is going. BA6 room temperature is very brittle. See, it's very easy for it to basically snap on its way in or anywhere throughout the printer. So one thing I like to do is actually keep it warm in this dry box. And by keeping it warm, it's slightly more forgiving and a bit flexier than what I just showed you. And the goal is that it minimizes the possibility of it breaking on its way to the hot end. Another thing that I've had success with is actually using an extra piece of Bowden tube where I feed it into the exit of the dry box and I connect it to the back of my X1C so that the filament is always guided through a PTFE tube and never touches the room temperature air. What had happened to me a few times was that the filament snapped on the entry point in the back of this machine while it was printing and obviously that is not ideal. So I'm just going to show you how I set everything up including what I connect this Bowden tube to. What I'm showing you is uber specific to the X1C and I often feature this printer on my channel just because I own it and I use it a lot. It's been a workhorse ever since. So I'll just show you what's worked for me and then you can kind of adjust to whatever system you're using. I do recommend printing PA six and any high temperature materials in enclosed systems and I'm sure you can find some spare PTFE tube or Bowden tube from another one of your printers or on Amazon. First what I have to do is remove my filaments and disconnect the AMS. As I mentioned before, PA6CF is very abrasive and is incompatible with the automatic feed system. Once inside the AMS, right here where the Bowden tube enters, there's a black piece right here where if you just press down on it and you pull the Bowden tube from the back, it's a lot easier to remove. Just like that. And then there's a cable right here on the back of the AMS that I just need to unplug. With the X1C, you can actually run a spool from the back without having to disconnect the AMS, but I want to completely move this unit, so if I need to service the machine from the top, I can. So once it's fully unplugged, I can just move this out of the way. The next key thing back here is we need to disconnect the Bowden tubes. So currently the Bowden tube goes into this hub which connects to the AMS. We did unplug this. We also need to unplug the Bowden tube up here from this coupling. It's just a quick release coupling. Push down on the black piece and I can pull the tube right out. That extra piece of Bowden tube that I mentioned earlier, I'm actually going to now connect to this coupling that I just removed this tube from. I will take the end of this new Bowden tube into my filament dryer, just like this. And so once I'm ready to print, I'll open up my dry box, take the end of this filament spool, guide it up through this new PTFE tube, which enters into this coupling, and get sent directly to the printer hot end. To load the filament, just go through the normal utility in the filament tab. Now that I've disconnected the AMS, it no longer shows the four spools on here. You can click on the spool and make sure I've selected the proper filament, which in case you can't see, I've selected the PACF profile. There isn't one specifically titled PA6, so I hit PACF, confirm. And then when I'm ready, I will hit load. And so what happens is the printer will heat up the nozzle and then I have to manually push the filament to the hot end until the gears grab it. Once it's heated up, the utility reads, please feed from the spool holder until the tool head filament sensor is triggered. Manually push the filament up into the hot end until the extruder gears grab it. Once they've grabbed it, if the filament has been extruded, click done. If not, please push the filament slightly forward and click retry. 
So I'm done, because I saw the filament come right out. So when you see the material purging out when they are successfully loaded, And now we have officially loaded our PA6CF from the back of the X1C. When it comes to your slicer, there are a few key settings that we're going to modify in the PA profile in Bamboo Studio. These settings are what made it possible for me to print using the 0.4 millimeter nozzle without clogging. I was getting serious clog issues and I thought it was maybe because my filament wasn't dry enough. No, I was a victim of heat creep where my filament was melting too early in my nozzle and it was just getting stuck. So to minimize this, there's a few things I can change. I can lower the heat of my nozzle by just a bit. I can increase the cooling of my hot end, the part cooling, and then I can decrease my retraction speed and my retraction length. Retraction length is the amount that my hot end is pulling up my filament when it does a retract move, and then the speed is obviously the rate at which it pulls back that filament. So after adjusting those parameters in my profile, I stop clogging which is awesome make sure your printer and nozzle are selected properly and then pa6 cf it's printed on the engineering plate so i've selected the proper profile and the little asterisk here indicates that i've made some modifications to the profile hitting this little edit button we're going to modify the preset so for the nozzle temperature i've actually decreased it slightly by five degrees celsius just to minimize this temperature. In terms of cooling, I've actually increased the fan speed threshold. So before it was 10% for minimum, I went to 30, and for the maximum, previously it was 30 and I went to 50. You can start with these values and if you're still getting clogging issues, you can increase them as needed. Then here's the key, setting overrides. So this is where we're going to modify the retraction length and retraction speed settings. So initially, neither of these are checked, meaning the default length and retraction speed are being used. What I can do is modify them by just selecting the checkbox. You can probably, while you're here, also select the D retraction speed, but I've had success without that selected. And that's about it. So one problem that I wasn't expecting to have was my bed warping problem. So what do I mean by bed warping? So you think that printing a high temperature material, considering I'm printing dog bones too for my samples, which are flat prints, that, oh, because it's high temperature, I'm probably going to have the print prone to warping off of my bed. So let me add a brim. Added a brim, the print didn't warp off the bed. What warped was the bed itself. My prints are 100% solid. So it's a lot of heat being laid down, not only on my heated bed, but from the nozzle. And when I filled my whole build plate, what I noticed that was happening was my bed ended up warping off of the magnetic platform. So my mitigation for that was to use some of these clamps that I cut the ends off to hold the plate in the corners so that it wouldn't warp up when I was printing. And I had to cut the ends so that the door would still close properly. My tip for you when it comes to slice is to consider how many parts you're printing and how you lay them out on this build plate. And as I mentioned before, I do not recommend printing like this with a full build plate. This is what caused major warping of my build plate. I also think it's because I printed each sample at 100% infill or solid, so there was so much hot material being laid in these localized spots on the build plate, which obviously I had nowhere to go because of that concentrated heat in the center the build plate warped around the corners. Now, when I'm printing at different orientations, such as these, where I will be using supports, the supports actually help dissipate some of that residual heat of the print, have the build plate less prone to warping. 
so instead of printing a full build plate like this, even with me staggering the prints, I still had issues of the build plate warping. So instead of filling it, I'd recommend doing part by part. And if I click on this and hit arrange, it nests the parts pretty closely but I do recommend keeping a gap in between them so there is time for each layer to cool between the new one being laid on top. Not like this, more like this with the gap. Another thing to note when printing PA6CF, especially if you print relatively flat details, is that after coming off of the build plate, they will slightly curl up on the ends. So whether you wanna put them under a stack of books or, or a weight, Another pro tip is immediately unload your filament from the hot end once your print is done or keep the hot end warm until you can unload the filament. Ideally, you don't want the PA6CF cooling in your hot end because it can lead to a clog. Learn that the hard way. Also, when it comes to support removal, you want to remove the supports when the print is still hot, otherwise it's going to be very difficult to remove the supports once the print has cooled. And I'm speaking from experience, it truly is a hassle. If you forgot about your print or it finished overnight and you're just getting to it in the morning, have a heat gun on handy, warm up the supports and remove it that way. But if you can, remove the supports while the print is still hot. It will save you from the support nightmare I had to endure. Have spare hot ends on deck in case you can't unclog the one you clogged and you need to keep printing and also have a lot of glue for coating your build plate. That purple to clear Elmer's glue is great. Mark Forge recommends it on their build plates. I don't recommend the dollar store brand glue sticks because those did not work all too well, even for PLA for me. I'd also like to shout out the Strelkomania Discord server. As I was struggling printing my testing samples in PA6CF, I had quite a bit of help from a few members. 